There's a belt set, though. There you go. I want to congratulate Jose for a great performance. It was uh, two warriors in there and one won and the other lost, and that happens in boxing. But I want to make a special thanks uh, to his trainer, Robert Garcia, who did such a wonderful job. With Jose. And now let me turn this over to the unified champion, Jose Ramirez. Thank you, Bob. First and foremost, I want to thank God for uh, the opportunity. I, I feel very blessed, uh, to be honest, to be here in this position. It's been an amazing training camp. I have an amazing team for my manager, Rick Merrigan, team of my promoter, Bob Arum, and uh, Robert Garcia, Charles Trembley, and uh, Jose Contreras, who's our assistant coach, and Miguel Diaz, who's my cut man. You know, I, uh, I couldn't have done this without my family, without the support of my team, without the support of Top Rank, and uh, we're here, and uh, now I'm the uni unified uh, champion at, in the 140 pound division. Uh, I came here with one mission, so focused just to fight, you know, to do my fight, and uh, I really didn't put too much attention of the venue or the network. I was just so focused uh, to go out there and just be myself and go back to some of my fundamentals and take my time <laughs> I know I've done the mistake before as uh, to come into aggressive and and uh, me and Robert we worked this in the last nine weeks just on going back to my rhythm and the nice jab and doing everything I did when I was an amateur. What took me to becoming an Olympian, I went back to that. And uh, the punches that hurt most in the professional level are the ones that you don't see coming. So you know, Marie Sucre was he wasn't expecting me to be explosive because I went back to just using my jab and uh, closing the range little by little as the fight went. <coughs> And before you knew it, I was able to, to land my combination, and I think that surprised him. But he's a tremendous uh, champion, and I also want to thank him and his family and his team, and uh, Eddie Hearn, Matchroom Box in the zone. They, they did a, a tremendous job this week, taking care of our team. Uh, I'm having a great time, to be honest. It was a great, great week uh, here in Texas, in Arlington, Texas. And, and again, it was a blessing for me to, to showcase my talent in front of a new crowd, a new, new media, new people to really get to know who Jose Ramirez is. Jose, you talked a lot about your dreams as a, as a young boxer coming up in the amateurs about winning a world title, but that even a bigger deal for you, you said, was to unify the titles that you have now done. Can you just sort of express what it has meant to you then to now have the second title? I mean, the first one was great, but now you got what you really wanted was another one. You know, I'm still in shock a little bit, to be honest, because I, I, I didn't go after a vacant uh, title. I went after a guy who was a world champion, who was a humble world champion, and uh, and he, you know, he, a humble champion is always going to prepare himself at his best. So I feel very proud of myself and my team uh, because we got the jump done. Jose, okay, how much, how much you think that knockdown in the first round that Scott scored knockdown threw him off his game? Because he seemed like it took him a while to get back in the fight. You know, was a, was a step. Well, the, the job, uh, the round went kind of, kind of, kind of fast. The first round, and it always goes really, really fast. Uh, you know, but you know, he. Uh, he went back to doing what he did with Alex Acedo, and I think, you know, he, the plan for me to show uh, Marie Sucre was that I'm a whole different fighter than Alex. I'm a lot stronger than Alex, I'm a lot faster than Alex, and I could box better than Alex. And I think I showed all those three qualities. Uh, and uh, I just tried to overwhelm uh, Marie Sucre since the, first, since the first round, and I could see the way he was kind of losing his balance every time I would touch his arms. Uh, even though the punches were landing clean, I was, you know, I was, I was able to take control of the fight. And, I just stayed to the game plan and uh, saw my opening, and, and thank God I <laughs> that did enough. Jose, but, yeah. uh, I know a lot of people question why you left Freddie Roach after winning a title. Uh, why does it work so well with you and Robert? Because uh, Robert, well, Robert's a very similar guy like me. You know, we're first generation here in the United States. We worked, we come from a, a hardworking family, worked in the fields, and and uh, his whole his whole gym is he's he's well. Uh, He's always so focused on his on his on all his fighters. He's so you know, he's so optimistic and so motivated to train us. And that makes it easier for us to do our job, you know, when we're in the ring, when a when the coach sees us and he and he sees you with that with that expression that, that you got what it takes, you know, to, to, to make it far, then it, that makes it easier for me to do what I do best. Um, you know, Freddie Roach is a, is an amazing uh, legendary trainer and you know and I was blessed to train with him for four years. And uh, 
You know, he, he, he showed me something that I didn't know before, and, and I'm always going to take that with me. You know, now I just added more to my game plan with Robert. Uh, I, you know, his gym is very family-oriented. Uh, the chemistry that I have with my coach, um, it, it keeps getting better and better. And, you know, as time goes on, he, he tends to, he learns how to understand me as a fighter better. Uh, you know, he knows how hard I work, and, and I'm very coachable. And I think that's, very, that's one key for a fighter to succeed is to continue being coachable. Jose, speaking of that, can you elaborate a little bit on what your game plan was for Maurice Hooker going into this fight? My game plan was to close the distance, but uh, not closing in a way where I was going to be overly aggressive uh, to where he saw everything coming. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to uh, surprise him and, and land my combinations uh, by using different volume on my punches. Some punches just tapping on some punches. Uh, really sitting down on him, and I, you know, I felt like I was throwing that jab, uppercut, jab, uppercut, jab, jab touching to the body. Uh, just so I kept him uh, where he's, you know, waiting for, for me to really commit, you know, and to, and I felt like I, had, I kept him thinking because he didn't know how, how hard I really hit uh, until the moment came, you know, and uh, that was the game plan is to, is to use my rhythm and, 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 and keep my, move, my, my head moving forward. Uh, side to side, breaking at the waist throughout the whole time, not giving him a second to, to land anything while I was closing the range. Well, so so it, like, it looked like you really wanted to invest in the body. Was there something in previous fights with Booker that you felt that, you and Robert felt that it was the right game plan to attack the body? Someone like Maurice Zucker is, 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 you know, he's long in range. He's going he's gonna, to he's gonna commit too much on his right hand. He's going he's gonna to be looking for the right hand all, all night. So uh, one, way, one way to do... One way to, to take that right hand away is to, to hit that body shot so you can keep it stationary the way I did against Amir Iman. Uh, Amir Iman was also known for having a tremendous right hand and I, you know, I, kept, the, I kept that right hand stationed. He kept the right hand stationed because he felt the, me touching him to the body with the, with the left hook. I know he, in an interview before he said that he was going to try to take away my left hook. Um, I just didn't know how he planned to do that, you know, but uh, my plan was to take away his right hand too. I just, you know, I was just so focused on, on doing that in the ring, in the fight. Jose, now that you got the, the uh, WBO Boxing Super Series is going to have their final between Regis and uh, Josh Taylor in October, how close attention will you take to that fight? Been, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, you know, I'm keeping, I'm keeping uh, close attention uh, attention to, to the fighters in that tournament, um, you know, and uh, I signed up to fight the best, to be honest. Um, my goal is to fight the best, you know, I'm not afraid to, to you know, take a take a loss in my record, I'm, I'm, I want to go in there and, and really bring the best out of Jose Ramirez and the better fighters I fight, the, the better Jose Ramirez I'm going to you know, be able to show and uh, you know, it just, I'm waiting for that tournament to finish first and foremost, um, you know, I, it just depends when that fight takes place. I do plan to also uh, stay active too, I owe it to ESPN and Top Rank for allowing me to come to you know, the zone and, and uh, match with boxing. So I owe, I owe them a I owe them a fight back before the year ends. If they're not, you know, they, they fight towards the end, then we could be looking at the fight early 2020. Jose, we talked about and Robert. We talked. Congratulations, by the way. We talked about Virgil Ortiz Jr. and the impact he had on you in training and for both of you. Can you can you fill in a, in a fight like this? I mean, he's a, another 140 pounder from Dallas. Listen, Virgil Ortiz is a, he's a monster. That, that kid's a monster. That kid that. that uh, He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna do really good in the sport. That, that guy, that guy. There's no. I sparred Benny Packer. I sparred so many fighters, and no, no one hits and, and has that, that drive like like Virgil Ortiz. Robert, do you have anything to add on that? I, I agree. You know, he's, uh, you know, he sparred him, and uh, Jose always wants the toughest sparring out there, and he always told me, you know. Virgil's the only one in this gym that gives me that that kind of sparring. But I'm also a trainer that I also know that it's not an everyday thing. You know, we got to switch it around, have different sparring partners. You know, Jose, Jose wants to be in there with the best, and uh, he, he's always telling me, when am I going to spar Virgil? Because that's what he wants. But, you know, it's also my job to, to take care of not only Jose, but also Virgil, because they, they, both, they both go at war. You know, they, they, they go to wars. So I got I to look out it's, for both of them. It's, it's, it's funny because uh, uh, two, two, uh, two, weeks, two and a half weeks ago, I, I was doing a 12-round session, and, and I finished my 12 rounds of sparring, and Virgil had finished six rounds of sparring. And Virgil goes, hey, Jose, can, I, can you give me two more rounds? And he want to ask Robert, because Robert was going to say no, right? <laughs> and so he told me, and I was like, yeah. So I, went, I just jumped from one ring to the other, and I gave him two extra rounds. So I did 14 rounds, and he did eight rounds. Uh, but that's a, that's a, that's, that just shows a tremendous 
uh, talent that you, that you find in, in, in a gym like Robert Garcia's. And I think that's something that was lacking at 1.2 at, at, the, at the wild card boxing gym. Um, there's so many hungry, undefeated young fighters. They're not sparring partners, they're future world champions. Uh, and I was, you know, there was I was going against four, three, four, even sometimes five to give me the 12 round sessions. Question. Now that you got the WBO belt to go with that WBC, have you thought about being an undisputed champion, being the second person behind Bud Crawford to do that, to have that opportunity? Yeah, it would definitely be a blessing for me to become the undisputed world champion. But I won't fight at time, you know, and I'm going to go back to uh, to work and and I'm humble for, for this situation that I'm in, uh, but I'm still hungry, man, and I want to continue getting better and you know, one fight doesn't define someone, you know? This fight doesn't define Murray Sucker. You know, this Murray, Murray Sucker is a humble world champion. He's gonna, you know, I, I, I guarantee he's gonna come back a lot stronger. Uh, this fight only makes, only puts me, this fight only shows me where I'm at, you know? Personally, I, I, at the end of the day, the, the criticism and the people's opinions and what people think, that's all, <laughs> I really don't pay attention to that, man. It's it's, it's what I feel, and, and I feel like this, this is all the type of fights that, that they allow me to see where I where I place myself for myself only, you know. Uh, and my opinion towards myself is the only really thing that matters. And uh, and this 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 humble opportunity that I got, I took advantage of it, and I'm and I plan to to continue being a humble champion moving forward and, and going after the best. Jose, um, I, re I remember talking about you know last year, and Bob said that Robert's such a good teacher. Besides the fact that you know your first generation Mexican Americans, you know your dad's worked in the field. What what type of impact has Robert had on you? 